Hi everyone, today's video is on the topic Allergic Fungal Rhinosinusitis or AFRS. Allergic Fungal Rhinosinusitis is a non-invasive fungal sinusitis resulting from an allergic response against extramucosal fungal hyphae. In immunocompetent individuals, when the fungal hyphae accumulates in the sinuses, it results in fungal bulb formation because there is no invasion of tissue. If these immunocompetent individuals are atopic, it results in the formation of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis or AFRS. So, immunocompetent individuals, either he can have fungal bowl if he is not atopic, if he is atopic, then it can result in AFRS. Okay, now what are the etiological agents implicated in the formation of AFRS? It can be remembered as A, B, C, D. A for alternaria, B for bipolaris, and C for curvilaris, and D for dermatiaceous fungi. These all are dermatiaceous fungi. Okay. Okay, so this is how you remember the etiological agents which are implicated in the causing of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. On examination, what will be the findings? You will be able to see there is nasal polyposis and it is usually unilateral. Why is it unilateral? Because the fungal hyphae will be accumulating in one of the sinuses and so there will be allergic reaction against these fungal hyphae in these sinuses and that is resulting in protrusion of the sinus mucosa out into the nasal cavity in the formation of nasal polyposis. Now, what is the characteristic feature of AFRS? That is the presence of thick tenacious mucus plug which is very sticky and that is what is known as the allergic mucin. And along with that, the patient will be having severe hyposmia because of the presence of nasal polyposis which is very extensive. So, what are the various clinical features? It actually presents like chronic rhinosinusitis. Along with that, there will be presence of extensive nasal polyposis which is usually unilateral. Okay, unilateral nasal polyposis will be present. Along with that, there will be allergic mucin present and the hyposmia will be marked. Okay. And so, if you send this allergic mucin for histopathological examination, what will be the feature that is seen? Yes, this allergic mucin resembles the peanut butter or axle grease. So, it is also known as peanut butter appearance or axle grease appearance. And on histological examination, what will you be able to see? You will be able to see that there are eosinophilic mucin along with presence of fungal hyphae and inflammatory cells along with charcoal laden crystals. Okay, charcoal laden crystals and it is this uh, allergic mucin that is resulting in the axle grease or peanut butter appearance. Okay, peanut butter appearance. So, that is about the histopathological examination of AFRS. Now, coming to the radiological features. Focal areas of heterogeneous hyperintensity are seen in the CT and it is surrounded by hypodense areas and these hypodense areas are occurring due to accumulation of iron, calcium and manganese. Okay, these accumulate along with the accumulation of fungal debris and along with that what is happening there is remodeling of the sinus walls and thinning of the sinus wall. Sometimes even bony erosion can occur due to the expansion of the sinus walls. Okay, so the characteristic features of AFRS are double density appearance or the rail track appearance or the starry sky appearance which is seen due to the heterogeneous hyperindense areas seen within the hypodense areas. Okay, so you will be able to see starry sky appearance or rail track appearance or the double density appearance in case of AFRS. Okay, these are the various features of AFRS which are seen radiologically. So, 
how will you diagnose afrs there is a criteria and it involves first of all there is type 1 hypersensitivity and on examination there will be nasal polyposis and there will be eosinophilic mucin and the characteristic ct finding such as double density sign should be present along with fungal sign should be positive these are the major features or the major criteria of the afrs diagnosis now minor criteria includes presence of bronchial asthma presence of charcot laden crystals eosinophils and fungal culture being positive okay so what are the major criteria type 1 hypersensitivity presence of nasal polyposis eosinophilic mucin the characteristic ct finding such as the double density sign and the bone expansion and along with that there should be fungal stain positivity so there are five major criteria and six minor criteria now what is the minor criteria associated with afrs first of all there should be presence of unilateral preponderance i told you the nasal polyposis is seen unilaterally okay then you have bronchial asthma bronchial asthma presence presence of eosinophilia okay charcot laden crystals have to be present fungal culture to be positive and on ct there will be bone erosion okay so these are the various minor criteria which are uh, associated with the afrs now what is the treatment of afrs first of all you have to go for endoscopic sinus surgery to remove all of these fungal hyphae because only if the fungal hyphae is removed the antigen which is causing the allergic reaction can be stopped and for that you have to remove the antigen and along with that there is another purpose of uh, doing this because the mainstay of treatment of afr is steroid nasal spray for the steroid nasal spray to reach the whole of the polyps to be removed otherwise it will be obstructing the uh, even though you are putting the nasal spray it won't be reaching there okay so that is the problem if you do not do surgery and simply give steroid nasal spray okay so the treatment option is steroid nasal spray that is topical steroid has to be given that is even after removal of the nasal polyposis you have to use steroid nasal spray and use of budesonide as atomized spray or low volume rinses are also used even though it is not fda approved the use of oral steroids which are given in the perioperative and the postoperative period is also necessary to prevent recurrence and yes afrs is also known as the diabetes of the sinuses so you will have to continue this steroid spray life long or otherwise what will happen there will be recurrence of the disease another adjunctive treatment that is nowadays being used is manuka honey which is available from new zealand okay so management is in the form of endoscopic sinus surgery followed by systemic steroids the systemic steroids are given in the perioperative and immediate postoperative period and you will have to give topical steroids life long in the form of steroid nasal spray okay and when will you give systemic antifungals antifungals are given in case of recalcitrant afrs okay in recalcitrant afrs and in patients who can't be given steroids in such patients you will have to give antifungals and of course you can use manuka honey as an adjunctive treatment as well okay now how will you follow up the patient for that you can do endoscopy serially and for assessing you can use the filport javer endoscopic staging system okay filport javer staging system and what else can be done you can do ige level estimation which is always raised in case of afrs and it is usually about 50 to 1000 in case of afrs and the average is around 500 okay you can assess whether it is coming down or going up 
according to the severity of the disease. Okay, that's how you follow up the patients who have AFRS and whose surgery has been already done. Okay, so that's about allergic fungal rhinosinusitis and I'll be coming with another important topic until then. Goodbye.